Hi everybody. So let's go through this practice problem that I put on the website the other day. I haven't actually figured this one out myself yet, so let's uh, work on it together. So if we go take a look at the problem, uh, we have some data. So let's put down the pertinent data that we have. We know we have a 300 and 55 acre reservoir. We know we have a much larger watershed, 7,800 acres. We know we have an evaporation rate of three centimeters per day, 0.3 centimeters per day, excuse me. And this is for water bodies, like the reservoir. We also know that we're going to get 103 centimeters of precipitation both on the lake and in the watershed and we also know that in the watershed 40 percent or 0.4 of the precip actually runs off We also know that the dam managers are going to release 13 cubic feet every second and they're going to release that to an outlet that goes downstream to serve people with senior water rights. We also know that the reservoir will drop 2.4 meters in the seven months that the dam managers collected data. Okay, so those are the sort of pertinent facts that we have. What we want to know is because the dam managers suspect that they may be losing some of their reservoir water to the groundwater system, they want to see if they can use the data provided here to figure out just how much is being lost per day. So the goal of this is to find out how much reservoir water is lost to the groundwater system every day. Now to do this, easiest way to do these sorts of problems are to apply the hydrologic equation, which is input minus output equals a change in storage. Now in this case, the storage we're talking about is the reservoir. We have inputs to the reservoir, we have rain on the reservoir, we have runoff into the reservoir, we have outputs from the reservoir, we have evaporation off the surface, we have water that's being released downstream, and it seems that we have some groundwater that's being lost as well. We also know the change in storage. We know this 355 acre reservoir dropped 2.4 meters over seven months. So we have enough data to figure out how much water is being lost to the groundwater system. So let's go on to the next slide here.
and we'll start with the hydrologic equation. So again, we have inputs. minus outputs equals a change in storage. Now the important thing to remember for these hydrologic equations is that these values for inputs, outputs, and change in storage are typically measured as volume. And the volumes you're most likely to see in terms of units are either acre-feet, which is the most common one we'll use. You may see cubic feet, but since these cover such big areas, you end up with tremendous amounts of cubic feet. Um, so it's usually easier to talk about a smaller number like acre-feet. Or sometimes you'll see it also in cubic meters. But in general, most of the time you're going to see it in acre-feet. Okay, now occasionally you can find hydrologic equations where each of the inputs, outputs, and change in storage are measured as flow rates. such as cubic feet per second or cubic meters per second, but that's pretty rare. Um, for the class that we're doing here and for most hydrology applications, we're going to use the hydrologic equation and each of the inputs, outputs, and change in storage are going to be measured in volume. And most of the time those volumes will be measured in acre feet. Okay. So just as an aside, the other thing that you should remember about volumes is that in hydrology, we can calculate volumes a couple of different ways, depending on what data we are given. For most of the applications we will use, a volume is going to be calculated as an area times a depth. Areas are typically measured in square feet or acres. Depths are typically measured in feet. So your volumes will either be measured in cubic feet or more likely acre feet. Occasionally, though, and since we're dealing with stream flow, we can also measure volumes by using flow rates, where the volume is going to equal the volumetric flow rate. For our hydrology examples, we've been talking about stream flow. So we've been talking about streams moving at a rate of so many cubic feet per second. In order to get the volume, you simply have to multiply your volumetric flow rate by your time. In this case, also in seconds. When you multiply a flow rate, such as cubic feet per second, times the time in seconds, you will end up with a volume, in this case, cubic feet. Now we might have to convert that to acre feet if all the other units are in acre feet, but you guys have enough experience now with units to be able to do that. Okay, so let's identify our inputs and put some simple numbers on them. Okay, again, we're gonna try to do volumes for each. So 
So what do we have for inputs into the reservoir? Well, if you go back to our problem, we see that we have rainfall on the reservoir. And just to put some quick numbers on it, remember we had 103 centimeters of rain. That's a depth. That's falling on a 355 acre reservoir. Now that's not the unit that we ultimately want, but it's a starting point. It gives us something to think about and something to convert a little later. We also have some runoff into the reservoir. We know that a 103 centimeters of rain fell on the reservoir, but only 40% actually runs off. So we have to multiply that 103 by a fraction, 0.4. And we know the rainfall depth, 103 times 0.4, is going to land on that entire 7,800 acre reservoir. So again, not the units we're looking for, but we'll convert those in a minute. We also have some outputs, don't we? That we also want to measure as volumes. We have evaporation off the reservoir itself. We know that we have point three centimeters per day. And that this is going to evaporate over a period of seven months. Which we'll have to convert to days, but we can get to that. So that's a depth. And then to get a volume, we have to multiply by the area. And the area of our reservoir is 355 acres. So we're starting to put down the information that we need to quantify this. We also know that the dam managers are letting water out. So we have some outflow. We know the dam managers are releasing 13 cubic feet of volume per second. So this is a flow rate. We also know that they're doing this over the entire seven months. And remember, when you multiply a flow rate by a time, you get a volume. So we're going to get a volume out of this. It's going to be in cubic feet that we'll have to convert to acre feet so we can compare them to all the other values. But that's something we can do in a minute. Finally, we have one more outflow, and this is the big question. Okay, this is the one we don't know. So we know we're losing water to groundwater. So lost to groundwater is what we're ultimately going to look for. So we have our inputs well defined. We have two of our three outputs defined. One thing we also have is we can calculate a change in storage. We know that we have a drop in the reservoir level. Remember, we're going to want to have a volume for this. So the drop in a reservoir is a depth. And that depth was 2.4 meters. 
In order to get a volume, you have to know the area over which this process occurs. We know this is occurring on the reservoir, so we have 355 acre reservoir that's dropping by 2.4 meters. Again, not if we just multiplied these two numbers together, we wouldn't get the unit we're looking for, but that can come later. So, we have inputs. Rain on the reservoir. We can quantify that. We have runoff. We can quantify that. We have evaporation. We can quantify that. We have outflow. We can quantify that. We don't know loss to groundwater. That's what we want to figure out. And we know our change in storage. So we have all the pertinent pieces. So let me switch ahead to the next slide and I'm going to rewrite this. So again, we have our inputs, always in, always a volume, minus our outputs, again as a volume, equals our change in storage, also a volume. So our inputs are rain on the reservoir, plus our runoff, minus our outputs, which are evaporation, outflow, and the one we're looking for, groundwater. And that's going to equal our change in storage. Okay, so there's our setup. We can quantify everything but groundwater. So if we rearrange this equation, add groundwater to both sides of the equation, subtract change in storage from both sides of the equation, we end up with rain plus runoff minus evaporation minus outflow, minus change in storage, equals our groundwater lost from the reservoir. All right, so now that this is all set up, and some of you I realize could probably figure this out in your head, but if you're having a hard time following the big picture, then using this hydrologic equation can be really helpful in envisioning the processes involved. Okay, so let's quantify this now and do our calculations. So let's start with rain on the reservoir. Okay, what do we know about the rain on the reservoir? Well, we know we have 103 centimeters. That is a depth. To get a volume, we have to multiply it by the area. We know it's 355 acres. I think we can already see that Acre feet is going to be a convenient unit to use for this. So I already have acres, but we have centimeters, so we just need to change centimeters to feet. We can get rid of centimeters on the bottom by first changing it to inches. We know there's 2.54 centimeters and one inch. If we left it at that point, we'd have acre inches. We want acre feet, so we have to change inches to feet. 
there are 12 inches in every foot. So if you multiply this out, 355 times 103 divided by 2.54 divided by 12. I just calculated this and hopefully I typed it all in right. That's an input of 1199 acre feet. Give or take the decimal point. I'm just sort of rounding off here. Actually, let me multiply that out for you and I'll get you an exact total, if that helps. Eleven ninety nine point six three. I'm going to leave eleven ninety nine for the time being. Okay, our next input is runoff. Again, this is going to be a depth times an area. We know we have an area of seventy eight hundred acres. Nice thing is, when we go to our acre-feet conversion, we don't have to change that value. We also know that 103 centimeters fell on that 7,800 acres, but not all of it ran off. Only 40%, or only 0.4 ran off. So we need to multiply this by 0.4. Okay, if we just stop there, again, we would have acre-centimeters. We need acre feet, so let's do a conversion. We know there are 2.54 centimeters and one inch, and we know there are 12 inches and one foot. Let's multiply this all out. So we have 7,800 times 103 times 0.4. And then we divide it by 2.54, divide by 12, and we get 10,543 acre feet. And I'm cutting the decimal off just for simplicity. You can keep the decimal point on if you desire. Okay, next part we have some evaporation. Now the evaporation is coming off of the small 355 acre watershed. Again, this is going to be a volume, so we have to have an area, 355 acres, times a depth. We know that we have an evaporation rate of 0 0.3 centimeters per day off water bodies. Remember, we're looking for a volume. We have an area in acres. Now we need a depth. What I have instead is 0 0.03 centimeters per day. That's a rate. In order to change a rate into either a volume or a depth, we just have to multiply by the time. We know that we had 0.3 centimeters of water evaporating off the surface of the reservoir every day, and we know that happened for 270 days. So now we're going to get rid of our days, and we will be left with centimeters. So just like the previous problem, we now have acre centimeters. We want acre feet, so let's get rid of centimeters. 2.54 centimeters per one inch and then we want also to get rid of inches 12 inches in one foot so again let's multiply this out i'm going to do the same time you guys are doing it so let's do 355 times 0 0.3 times the 270 days we 
We're going to divide that by 2.54 inches. And then we're going to divide that by 12 inches per foot. And I want to make sure I did this right, so I'm going to do it twice just to make sure I get my value right. And now I've done this twice and I've got two different answers, so I'm clearly not typing in my values right, so I'm going to do it again until I get this answer right. So let me do this a little slower. So 355 times 0.3 times 270. Divided by 2.54, divided by 12. Okay, I get 943 acre feet. So the units cancel out here, and you have acres times feet. All right, so hopefully I calculated that correctly. I did it four times and got three different answers, so it's one of those days for me. I'm sure you've had them as well. All right, let's look at outflow. Okay, we know that the dam managers are releasing 13 cubic feet per second. And they're doing that over 210 days. Now, 13 feet per second again, cubic feet per 13 cubic feet per second. That's a flow rate. If you remember back, the way you get a volume from a flow rate is to take the flow rate and multiply it by the time. Now we have different units for time, so we're going to have to change our days to match the time on the outflow in seconds. We could do it the other way too. I guess we could change seconds to days and have them cancel out. Either way, it's gonna work just fine. So let's get rid of days. We know there are 24 hours in one day. We know that there are 60 minutes in one hour and we know there are 60 seconds in one minute so the days cancel the hours cancel the minutes cancel and we're left with seconds that are then going to cancel and we're going to be left with cubic feet all of our other measurements remember are in acre feet so we need to convert cubic feet to acre feet by changing feet cubed to acre feet by first let's get rid of some feet squared in our feet cubed. We know we want to get to acres, right? So we know that there are 500... 5,280 feet in one mile. And we also know that there are 640 acres per mile squared. So if we can get a mile squared going up top here, cancel out feet on the bottom. So we have feet one, feet two, that gets rid of our feet there. We now will have miles times miles, that's square miles. We also know that there are 640 acres in one 
miles squared. So now let's multiply this all out. So we have 13 times 210 times 24 times 60 times 60 times 640. And now we have to divide by 5280 and divide by 5280 again. I'm running out of room here, but I'll put it right next. I ended up with 5,414.8 acre feet. Okay. Hopefully you're able to follow that. If you're still having issues with that, make sure you get a hold of me and I can help you work through that in the next couple of weeks. Okay, so we have our rain on our reservoir, 1199 acre feet. We have our runoff, 10,500. 43 acre feet. We have our evaporation. Which is 943 acre feet. We have our outflow. Which is 5,414 acre feet. The last one we have to do now is our change in storage. So let's go on to the next page. We have our change in storage. We have 355 acres again. And we know the level dropped by 2.4 meters. Acres times meters, that's a volume, but we're using acre feet for everything else. So we need to change meters to feet. We know there are 100 centimeters in every meter. Meters are going to cancel out. We also know there are 2.54 centimeters per inch and we know there are 12 inches in one foot. So we're going to end up with acre feet. So let's do the calculation. We have 355 times 2.4 times 100 I'm going to divide that by 2.54, and we're going to divide that by 12, and I end up with 795. Let me check my math one more time. Always good to double check it. I'm certainly going to do it. So let's try this again. 355 times the 2.4 meters times our 100 centimeters and then we're going to divide that by 2.54 and 
and then we're going to divide it again by 12. 27.95. Okay, did it the same way twice, so hopefully I have that right. And again, that's in acre feet. So let's go back to our hydrologic equation. Input minus output equals change in storage. Remember earlier we rearranged it so that we have rainfall plus runoff minus evaporation. Minus outflow. Minus your change in storage is going to equal your groundwater lost. So let's put in our numbers. For rainfall, we had 1,199 acre feet. For runoff, we had 10,543 acre feet. Minus our evaporation, which was 943 acre feet. Minus our outflow, 5,414 acre feet. Minus our change in storage, 2,795 acre feet. And again, that's going to equal our groundwater lost. So let's do the math. I'll try this a couple times, make sure it's right. So we have 1199. 1099, excuse me. No, it's 11.99. Might hope if I did this right. Okay, 11.99 plus our 10,000 543 and now we're going to subtract our 943 we're going to subtract our 5414 and we're going to subtract our 2795 believe all those are our numbers. When I did all that, I ended up with 2,590 acre feet that was lost to groundwater. Now remember that was in 270 days. And I asked you, I think at the beginning, figure out the volume of water in acre feet that is being lost from the reservoir to the groundwater system per day. So if we have 2,590 acre feet lost to groundwater in 270 days, we simply divide 2,795 by 270 days. Let's do that here. 2,590 acre feet, divide by 270 days equals, let's do the math, divided by 270, about 9.59 acre feet per day lost to groundwater. So that would be the final answer. Now the dam managers know how much 
Water is being lost to groundwater every day, about 10 acre feet. And they can come up with better estimates on how water is going to behave in their system with time. So hopefully I did all of the math right. I didn't get a chance to go back and check, but I'm trying to check in real time just as you do. So let me know how your answers turned out. If you have any questions about any step along the way, or if you're just having a lot of trouble and don't know what to do at this point, let me know. Um, I will try to put another problem up later in the week or early next week that'll give you another chance to practice. So I hope this worked for you. Um, let me know what you think and get back to me soon.